Two moms, two marketers, two women new to the financial industry. They have a lot of questions. That's why they're bringing in financial experts to educate all of us here on A Penny or Two for Your Thoughts. Hi, everyone. I'm Chantal, Vice President of Marketing with Centris Federal Credit Union. Hey, it's Liz, Senior Marketing Specialist. Mid-year, it's June, it's hot. It is. Um... My husband and daughter and I, we all went for a walk the other day um, very good. just because we wanted to get outside, get a little vitamin D, a little sunshine on the, you know, Nebraska white skin. <laughs> um, and it shocked us at how many houses are popping up in our neighborhood. I mean, they are just mm-hmm. popping up like hotcakes. Yeah. Um, and then not only are they building, but then we've got, there was three houses on our street last month that popped up for sale. And I swear, like I blinked my eye and they were already yes. sold. Same. I know we're, we're close to each other. We live close to each other, but not in the same neighborhoods. And it's the same. We live in an older neighborhood and you'll, you'll see a sign go up. And the next day the sold sign is on, on, on the sign. And I just, I can't believe thinking back when we were a first time home seller. Mm -hmm. We had a couple weeks to get the house ready. We knew that we were going to have an open house on a Sunday. And so we had to, you know, get the kids out, all the things. Now it's like, uh, you've got 30 seconds. People are going to be lining up to get (laughs) into your house, to look at your Mm -hmm. house. So it's a crazy time, but we're going to learn some great things today on this show. So we're excited. Yeah, we're really excited for today's guest because he's someone that knows a lot about mortgages and home loans. And he's a he's been a great resource for not only mm-hmm. us, but really our members in the community. Um, he's been with Centris for 10 years, but he's worked in the mortgage lending industry for almost 30. I'd like everybody to welcome to the show one of our mortgage loan originators, PK Copen. Welcome. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. Great. It's my first time, but we're talking about first time home buyers, so it should all Perfect. fit. Perfect. Yeah. We'll just all roll it in. It mm-hmm. all fits together. <laughs> right. So you heard us talking about, you know, the buyer, the, the seller's environment, yes. how quickly sellers are getting rid of their houses, but that can create quite a few challenges for um, the buyers themselves. And especially for a first time home buyer, that can be very overwhelming. You know, what are the steps that they need to take to prepare to enter into that next chapter of their life? That's a good point. Yes, I can repeat all the same things you said because I'm seeing the same things happen in my neighborhood. More signs have popped up and the houses are selling rather quickly. And just recently when we observed uh, a sign going up in our neighborhood, my wife said it was middle of the day, but the cars were lined up everywhere to to come and see this house. It's just how it is anymore. So for that reason, and I have been... I bought houses and moved five different times in Omaha. So we've been through different types of markets moving. Mm -hmm. But each time we moved, there was a specific reason why would we move to a different house. Sometimes it's the size. Sometimes it's the location, the neighborhood, the need or whatever. But um, I still uh, very well remember our first time home buyer experience. So we get this. We always remember our first. Oh yeah. yeah. So get this. 1988. <laughs> Who can relate? But that's when when it was when my wife and I went through our. Uh, we're looking to uh, stop renting and wanting to own our first home. Call it our own. Put our own touches. Have our own backyard, and fill it up with children. Too, but oh well, it felt like <laughs> it got filled up. and it fills up quickly when it, you've got those kiddos. Yes, yes, it does. There was a lot of uh, extra equipment and paraphernalia that <laughs> yes. became necessary, so we did that. But I, I remember it very well because um, it was a special time, like it always is. I believe for first time home buyers, you're you're making a major life decision here. And you're spending major amount of money that you're not used to uh, right, doing, you right. know, car loan, this purchase, that purchase, nothing can compare to what you're when you get ready to buy your uh, first home. So even back then, it's more important now, but even back then, we did as much as we could to prepare, to plan and to educate ourselves. What is this and how do you get from being a renter to finally moving into your own home. What does it take? Uh, Fortunately for us, uh, 
I can't remember the introduction anymore, but we became acquainted with a real estate agent who was offering classes back then to try to introduce people like us to various concepts and steps and processes that are involved in, in, in buying your first home and all that you go through. Uh, we found that very beneficial, and no offense, but thankfully I I'm, I'm married a very smart woman mm-hmm. who understood all of these processes and, and concepts way more than I did, and here I was, a personal banker in financial industry, but the whole thing just went over my head because mm-hmm. there was just so much. Right. And that's why I believe... Uh, preparing and planning and then getting as much as education as you can in regards to this is very helpful. Right. So you talked about, um, in mm-hmm. your experience, you found a realtor and that went that route. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. When it comes to those first time home buyers, what route should they go? Should they, should they start talking to a realtor or should they really be talking to somebody like you? That's a, I love that question because those were different times back then, and this was one of the realtor's ways to try to attract more buyers to herself. But from that experience, one thing that I remember is our realtor was memorable. Our loan officer did her job. She wasn't good and she wasn't bad. She did her job. We did close on time. So from that, I it is my... Uh, desire that I want the whole team to become memorable. Mm -hmm. When when people are working with me, I want to be the one that was also remembered because I love to guide people through this process because there's so much there, so much to know. So between myself and realtor, I want them to remember the whole experience as a positive experience, at least for things that we can control, you know. So I want to be and I tr- strive to be the loan originator that is remembered for guiding people through this process and making it easier, simpler, and seamless because I believe that the financing process, I like to make it as simple and as smooth as I possibly can because those first-time home buyers, they have a whole lot of other things on their mind, right. and I don't want them to be stressing out about some right. financing process. Yeah, it's a trust. It's a trust factor. It, right? it really you have is to find mm-hmm. that person, whether it is the lender or the real estate agent yes. that has trust, especially mm-hmm. that first time. I agree. And mm-hmm. one of the things I know you had talked to us about is. You know, you had mentioned the planning, the preparing, and the educating, yes. but it's really sitting down and asking, why do I want to do this? Mm-hmm. Is the time right? Mm-hmm. So kind of talk us through, especially if you're thinking, yes, I want to get out of this apartment. I want to get out of my parents' house. I want to mm-hmm. have my own home. Why do you need to ask that question, that why question first? Because you need your motivation and understanding why you're going to make that move Mm -hmm. so that it can stick with you as you go through this. And I'm sorry, but it is a lengthy process. Uh, You want to know your whys, just like you want to know your whys in any other things you take on in your life. So um, that's why I believe it's important that you start preparing as a first time, wanting to own your home for that first time. You start with your own personal preparation before you ever go see anybody. And that preparation involves understanding your finances and having a handle on it, you know, uh, because you're going to need money for down payment and costs. You're going to now have a mortgage payment. If you don't are not used to paying rent, suddenly there's going to be this sticker shock. If you are paying rent, this mortgage payment could be a little bit more. So that's the reason you got to start in your own mind, your own preparation. How much do I have? How much can I save up? How do I feel about this this size of a payment? Well, can I still live and do other things that I enjoy besides just making a mortgage payment on a house? All of these things are important for one to get a handle on in their own mind. I mean, we did, because there's two ways, two schools, how to approach this first time home buying. You can start conservatively like we we did, you know, a starter home, a smaller house, Mm -hmm. a very reasonable payment, so we're comfortable with handling all of this. Or some people just go all out right from the beginning and say, 
we'll grow into it, so to speak. Nothing is right or wrong. It just depends on your own uh, personality and style right. and, and right. how you want to approach it. Liz and I so. had talked about, you know, okay, we're excited. We have this new home. Oh, I need to buy a lawnmower. <laughs> right. yeah. I need to buy I need a hose. Yes. yes. The yes. things, right. you know, a snowblower, all the things <laughs> that you, that also come into the mix Correct. of, Correct. of yeah. financials that yes. you have to pay for. Yes. Uh, things that you have to think about beyond just that house payment. So you that's, are that's, so right. I think yeah. that... Most of the time, by the time I'm talking to people, we're very busy trying to understand these concepts and the loan process and all of these financials. I don't know. I leave it to them to get educated from parents, friends, and everybody else <laughs> yeah. who's owning need. a home. Yeah. <laughs> what are the practical parts of it? But those are as essential as can be, just the way you said. Right. The right kind of hose, the lawnmower. What about a snowblower? Or even appliances. Like some appliances. of the houses don't come with yes. all of the appliances. Yeah. 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 Like our that refrigerator happens. and washer right. dryer. Your new swing yeah. set. Mm, uh, let's there's talk that about that too. swing set. I mean, <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that it's swing beautiful, set. Beautiful, but you know, it's another thing. That yes, you, that's yes. why it's in the second home, not <laughs> yeah, the that's starter true. home. Very yes, true. Yeah. Very true. yes, that yeah. is correct. Come to think of it, our first home didn't have any of these swing set, but part of the attraction of buying that second home, not just being bigger, it came with a swing set and yes. slide already. Yes. Yes, a win. <laughs> a win right there. A little extra, you know. Right. Yeah, so, I'm yeah. pretty sure my husband won't let the swing set stay with the house if we um, move to a new house based on what we spent on said swing set Understandable. just uh, a few few weeks ago or yes. a month ago. Yes. That's yes. funny. Yeah, so. we're going on a month now. She's been mm-hmm. asking to swing on that. See. Yes. Yeah. So those are parts of a components right. of, of preparation you just gotta yeah understand your own self and your own finances and and so right. forth and being prepared for documentation there's mm-hmm. so much yes, yes. Like so much yep. mm-hmm. so many things you need to sign and be prepared mm-hmm. for from that perspective talk us mm-hmm. through what what a first-time home buyer needs to be prepared for from that perspective well, that's a great question also so when when somebody goes for a home loan I am biased and partial that they would come and see their credit union like Centris representative because we we are trustworthy and our, 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 we have our members' best interest in mind. We're, we're not at all just sitting there waiting to see what can we sell them. It's not that at all. It's just working together. It kind of becomes a teamwork. Mm-hmm. You, your loan originator your husband, wife, whoever you're buying this house with or alone, either way, we become kind of a team and we want to work together. The paperwork that's needed, and that's part of the preparation, and you'll find that on any website you, you, or you just Google it, is that it's always similar. You need your W-2s for two years. You need your two most recent pay stubs. You will need two months worth of bank statements. Here comes the most important part. Not a page of a bank statement. All the pages, because these banks issue uh, bank statements from one to eight pages, and one page just won't do. Oh, but one is blank. So what? It's numbered. It has a number of there. Eight of eight. We need it all. It's just the rules. What okay. can you do? But that's the same all aco- across the industry, and that's the preparation. Also, investment accounts sometimes help for reserves if needed. So the, the to me, the paperwork is easy to prepare with because you get pay stubs and you do taxes. So you have W-2s. You get bank statements. And now with the technology, all these bank statements, they're just sitting there for you online in a PDF format. How hard is that? Mm-hmm. Right. So, so it's all there, and that's a standard, standard set of documents, except for are you self-employed, running your own business, being a contractor for somebody? Well, then it gets a little more involved. Now the underwriters require two years of tax returns, not one, two years of ta- full two years of tax returns, whether they're personal and business both, whatever, depending on how you're running right. your business. So that's just an additional be prepared. Be prepared. Be that's prepared. part of the preparation. And if you, that's why I believe that it's never too early to start with this process. Right. You know, start a year ahead of time. It's okay. 
start sooner than a year if if you want to if that's ultimately your goal that's the direction you want to go to learn all these things and concepts to help you with your preparation eliminate the guesswork or the stress or the wonder how is this going to work or that or what can i afford start early get acquainted trust your um centrist advisor to walk you through all of that in great as many details as you want to right see I like what you said there too, planning kind of that year ahead. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned something before about having a down payment. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's a scary statement for any home buyer, (laughs) um, especially when you're thinking about a first time home. But I can remember even the second home and looking at what we were looking at and thinking about that down payment. A lot of times it's that 20 to 25% range that you have to think about. Mm -hmm. Um, Can you talk us through there's different ways that a first time home buyer can get that down payment. I liked the idea of planning a year in advance. So there's some savings opportunities there, but what are some other options that they have? That's a good point. That's why it's essential to start planning ahead. You know, whether you want to own a home eventually and get out of the rent situation, you just know that in your spirit and you'll start making plans for it. So if you consult with someone like me, uh, then we will let, make a plan for you and help you figure it out. How am I going to get from from here to there? And what about this down payment? I think the mortgage industry somehow knows that these first-time home buyers are the most challenged with money and down payment. So somewhere in our conversations before were misconceptions. Mm-hmm. And one of the misconceptions that exists to this day is, oh, I got to have 20% Mm -hmm. or else there's no house for me. It's not quite like that. We have made provisions uh, in this industry, and there's different options. Like, just to give you an example, veterans for sure don't need a down payment. Veterans get to buy a house with zero down. We bought our first house with zero down because I was a veteran, and we chose to go that route instead of investing our money in in the house. We wanted to spend it on other things, obviously. <laughs> so, so anyway, but besides being a veteran, these down payments come in different forms and gradually, so to speak. Just to give you an example, at Centris, we know all this, so we have made a provision. We have a loan program called My First Home where a down payment is only $500 for those who qualify. But that goes in further into the whole picture of preparation, which is don't hang everything on just what's the down payment. There's more to it. But at least the down payment is low, is what I'm trying to say. $500 for those who qualified. After that, it comes in gradual steps. Then the next level is 3% for down payment, first-time homebuyers only. And then after that, you can take it to 5% if you got the money, to 10%, then 20, or more if you if you want to. But it starts as low as $500. And there are a variety out there of first-time homebuyer programs that will also offer an assistance, homebuyer assistance, so that can help. And uh, right, right now, this season, this buying season that we're in, we are participating at Centris in a grant program. And my first home buyer that I got approved with this grant progr- uh, program of 7500 was just thrilled. That's $7,500 less out of her pocket. She still used a 5% for down payment, but a $7,500 grant went a long ways to help her with with her own funds. And now I'm working on the second young man, first time home buyer. He's also applying for this $7,500 grant. He's also putting down 5%, but that $7,500 will go a long ways in covering closing costs, taxes, insurance. It all has to do with the loan. He doesn't get to get have any money to go buy that loan more. That's that's on his own dime, but the, but the grant is very helpful in preparing to making sure you have enough money to get yourself into the house, so to speak. Going back to those trusted individuals again, because there's a lot of things that you just said that you may not know about and you may leave something on the table if you don't have that trusted individual. That's exactly right. And, and part of the other parts, where, where will I get my funds? Uh, One of my favorites is to talk about, well, you can get a gift from a relative. It can be mother or father or, uncle or brother or sister or whatever but it has to be a relative and they have to be willing to gift you some money so 
try to have good relationships. <laughs> right. Don't <laughs> burn bridges. Can. Yes. <laughs> right. So that is helpful. Um, what's allowable as long as it's affordable is you can get a secured loan uh, to raise some money. Not that you're going to borrow it for the whole down payment, but if you feel short on cash, one of the source of this funds that it's acceptable is getting a secure loan that would be like car title. I have worked with other first-time home buyers who have been on their job for a while, and their company allows them to borrow from their 401k and make them pay themselves back over time. Those are just acceptable sources, and I bring them up because they're sources that are not acceptable, and you won't know which ones they are unless you, like you said, sit down with your, with your trusted mortgage advisor and find out what, what will work for me and what won't. So what doesn't work is a credit card cash advance. advance. Nah. And uh, I remember that one very well. Somebody did that. Uh, once and then also what doesn't work is I'm going to get a personal loan and there's my money that doesn't work either so you have to be very careful and know these things and that's how the puzzle finally comes together when you know things and you're talking to somebody you trust who will walk you through that make sense that does make sense how does somebody go about finding the best lender and real estate agent good question again partial and biased but 10 years with <laughs> walking many people through centrus and also watching my teammates help so many families uh, over the years is you can start anywhere you want to because it's all online now you know it's google this google that but i would suggest start with your credit union whom you already trust and know and have your own appointment with a mortgage originator and Tell them your wishes, your wants. Tell them everything. The more you tell, the more you uh, share, the better they're going to understand your situation and the better plan they're going to be able to put together for you and the better guidance they're going to uh, give you to, uh, to accomplish your dream and own a home. So that would be my first suggestion. Start with your Centris uh, trusted credit union. Uh, if you really want to expand the sphere of your knowledge, then another one would be to, to of course, ask, you know, your friends, family, whoever has bought a house, well, who did you go through? How did that go? Did you like them? Would you trust them? Would you finance with them again? And you might want to, uh, you can also ask a real estate agent if you already know one, but you can also compare what's your my credit union telling me as opposed to ta me talking and interviewing uh, uh, somebody who works at a, one of the bigger banks that we have in town. You know, what's that look like? Mm -hmm. And then you have the third uh, level is the mortgage brokers. You know, they're independent companies. You're going to get similar and different answers all at the same time because these are three different sources of getting a loan, and they will have differences and nuances and similarities all at the same time because the mortgage industry is like an umbrella, so it has a similar things that they they cover i'll be honest one thing i do not recommend is getting your first home loan online we get all kinds of stuff online but i would not recommend that one there's too much at stake too much too many sure. moving parts and deadlines and dates that have to be met and whatever and that's why i recommend your local uh, providers rather than online good advice that's great mm -hmm. advice great the beginning oh, of the show, we started talking about mm -hmm. how people are lining up and things are moving fast. Yes. Good. Home inspections. Mm -hmm. So those are kind of hit and miss nowadays, right? Mm -hmm. you, people want to move so fast. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. What about for those first-time buyers? What, what is your advice around getting a home inspection? That's a sensitive topic anymore. Uh, we got a home inspection on every, on four out of five houses just because... They were different markets. There was time. It was standard. Mm -hmm. Nobody objected. Everybody knew. We're going to do a home inspection, and the contract was written such a way. The lenders acted accordingly. Sometimes we had to wait before we move on with the process until the home inspection was done and the clearance was given because that home inspection was kind of like the key. Will they proceed with the buying of this house, or was the home inspection just too needy with repairs and whatnots. But now, I, I admit, it's different. It, it goes both ways. Mm -hmm. uh, some, it's, 
it's still recommended that if somebody is a first time home buyer get that home inspection not so that you can nickel and dime that seller with a screw that's loose or a doorknob that's missing or who knows some of these little things but your home inspection is supposed to prove to you and show you that this house you want to buy that you just love and you want it to be yours so that it doesn't come to you mm-hmm. full with large bills that are right, lurking right. there somewhere in the background because you can't really see it with the next eye. Right. And those kind of things would be, you know, the home inspectors can point out, how's the roof doing? Does it have still life left in it? How's that heating and air, con- air conditioning system How's the electrical? How's the plumbing? Especially, how's the foundation? Right. So those are like big ticket items. Anything else yep. that's smaller, you can get your dad or somebody else to <laughs> right. candy they can to put the door fix on. it. Yeah, you know, <laughs> there's going to be... See, the reason I say it like that, because a house has been around and it'll always have something. Yep. But something is just minor and they're not going to yeah. break the bank. But you don't want to get stuck with the whole roof or windows for that matter yeah, right. or especially a foundation or mold in the walls or, or that mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so all of that exists plus i'm not sure i haven't heard much about it but it used to be essential and necessary to also get a radon inspection yeah. yep. i'm not hearing or seeing much about that anymore mm-hmm. but on the flip side of all of that uh a lot of sellers, or Fairmont, I should say, are do, doing and paying for their own pre-inspection. So that when you come to see the house, it's already been inspected by a professional inspector. And there's a whole report there. And you can view it and see, you know, what's been done, what's working, and right. what right. isn't. So that exists, and that's kind of become popular. A lot of agents use that. But I was going to ask if, that, if more homes, if more sellers are doing that, just getting that I pre-inspection. So. Yeah. Yes, yes. Otherwise, if you choose, no offense, I know people who didn't get a home inspection on their last house. If you don't get one, then once it's yours, it's yours, yeah. whatever bill comes your way. Yeah. Yeah. You can't go back to your real estate agent and say, you didn't tell me this. You can't get back to the seller either. You didn't tell me this. It's too late now. Yeah. It's now your house. Once you close and yeah. get the keys, it's your house and whatever comes with it. So we took that chance. So far, we're blessed. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, to your point, you always have that dad. We were talking yeah. about that. Like, we always go to our dads yeah. for the, yeah. the home repair. We never go to our husbands. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's a thing. So <laughs> That's a thing in my house. <laughs> yeah, if, if I may, um, when my wife and I... Do need do choose to do some sort of a home home project, do it uh-huh. yourself kind of a thing. We go to Home Depot or Lowe's, and we're asking questions and looking at things. And the salespeople, they're always looking at me, <laughs> and I have to redirect them. Excuse me, please look at and talk to the project manager. <laughs> it's not me. That's right. Sorry, some That's of us right. are just not handy. <laughs> we're just handy with paperwork. That's right. But fixing anything, yeah, That's it's right. it's yep. dad's or a brother who's That's handy, right. a relative, right. somebody well, out my there. My husband yeah. is very handy, and he's mm-hmm. built several things. It cool. just takes him a long period yes. of time. Yes. And as the project manager, I am very <laughs> ta- like timeline I oriented. And yes. It's, yes. yes, I totally. Sometimes it, if something's sitting there for a year yeah. and there's pieces, it mm. just, yeah. Or a paint spot that hasn't been painted. I have that in my house. <laughs> and I'm telling this story now so when he listens to it, he can maybe fix that paint spot. For Chad, yeah. please yes. fix the paint spot. <laughs> yes. I'm probably going to hear about it now every yeah. day. Yes. So it's just, it's all part of really of home ownership. And a lot of resources out there are available for the first time home buyers to, to turn to for help. And some people, are, not me, but some people are big fans of YouTube. Just look at the YouTube. Oh, It'll tell yeah. you how. Yep. Yeah, yep. it will. And it'll, that, that's nice. We didn't have those kind of resources back in the day. So it, right. it's a helpful right. tool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a, definitely a lot <laughs> of helpful tools out there for, yeah. for everything. But I really like... I really like um, the discussion we've had today and, Mm -hmm. you know, talking about planning, preparing, that education, um, you know, letting the buyers educate themselves, but then using you as that educational resource too. And I liked how we talked about really making it a team. It's a team effort. It really is. Mm -hmm. Um, Everybody needs to be, have a part in it and do something. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then it all comes together nicely. Yep. Mm -hmm. What would you leave as your penny for your thought? The the (laughs) thing that you want people to really remember from, from today's episode? 
Well, I would uh, like them to remember that whatever stage they are in preparing for this home to buy, that they really, really make an appointment, take time, how, wherever they are in the process of deciding, and talk to their uh, trusted mortgage advisor. Because they're going to walk away. It's kind of like going to a seminar, but it's going to be yours. It's not trying to address like, address like my real estate agent, room full of people trying to accommodate something everybody needs. No, it's yours. You can take that home with you. You, you know what you have to think about. You know what to do prepare for because your advisor will guide you like that and if you put in an application even if it's early they will guide you to your credit report whether it's good or bad doesn't matter they'll point out things so that's what i would encourage everybody really do come in sit down make an appointment and learn what 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 about me what's what's in it for me how do i win this game very good that's what i would say Thank very you. good mm-hmm. Thank you so much, PK. This has been a great discussion, and I know we've had quite a few discussions with you <laughs> in our in our time at Centris. And Thank you. We'll keep asking you lots of questions because yeah. that's what we do, and Thank I'm sure you. we'll yeah. find other topics to share around mortgages Let's that we can bring it. you in for. So. Mm-hmm. If you have any questions that you would like to ask us or even PK, um, like our subject matter experts, send them our way to a penny for your thoughts at centrusfcu.org. And feel free to share the wealth by subscribing, rating, and reviewing our podcast wherever you listen to your podcast, just so you don't miss an episode like today's because it was great. Also, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn for more great financial information. And you can visit our website at centrusfcu.org or just give us a call at 402-334-7000. Thank you so much for listening, and we hope you'll tune into the next episode. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.